it can be kind of hard to predict the question on this one because it it's got a lot of going a lot of stuff going on and there's a little bit of a distraction the quotation marks are a distraction they are not really something we need to consider here this isn't a quote in the sense of like someone saying something that we're pulling and putting in a, in a line. This is just a way of marking that that word weightlessness is like, it's in quotes. It's like, oh, maybe it's not actually weightlessness or maybe there's some sort of spin to the word. And, and that's what it's trying to convey is that, you know, it's got some special meaning to it. But this is a punctuation question, right? So if we, if we predict the question, we can see that all of the choices vary the punctuation. And if we've memorized the different ways that they test punctuation, we can see something here that that does come up on the SAT fairly often. It's, a, it's disguised, but it's, it's pretty clear to me. The idea isn't a positive. I don't care if you ever memorize the name, but you have to understand the concept. A lot of times when we are defining words, we want to... Uh, you know, kind of interrupt our thought with the definition. And what an appositive is, is it's kind of like that interruption. It's a way of describing something in a second way. And sometimes when we do this, we need to use commas because the thing that we're, the description is kind of like an extra clause. It's something we could omit from the sentence. So what I want to do here is I want to think about what is essential and what is just extra. So if I look at this sentence, it's kind of long. It goes over two pages, too. They do that on purpose. On the plane's ascent, passengers feel twice Earth's gravitational pull. So that's a, that's a sentence. Now it kind of resets. But for brief periods at the peak of the trajectory, kind of an intro, weightlessness, or microgravity similar to what is experienced in space, is achieved. So if I were to cut out the first part, which is its own sentence, right? So uh, here to here is its own sentence. The word but does a special thing. It's a conjunction. It lets us combine two sentences. Then we get to this part here, which is an intro to the second sentence. And the main second sentence is actually just this part. Weightlessness is achieved. That's the sentence. So what, what's that all about? What is this other stuff doing then in between the two parts of the main sentence? Well, that's what the appositive is. This is an extra description. It's defining weightlessness for us. And so what we need to do is we need to show using punctuation that this is an extra clause that is not part of the main sentence, that is an interruption. And we do that with, in this case, two commas. So where do we put those commas? We put it where the... Um, main sentence begins and ends. So I'll just use a green here to highlight what the appositive is. That part in green is one long description. So we're going to use commas on both sides of that. So we need a comma after the word weightlessness. So that gets rid of C, that gets rid of B, and that gets rid of A. So it's going to be D here. Weightlessness or microgravity similar to what is experienced in space. And then notice the second comma brings us back. And that's what punctuation in general does, is it's a way of interrupting or breaking apart the sentence structure. And so that is what's happening here, is we could remove that from the sentence, but if we're going to insert it, we need to show that there's an insertion. We need to show that there's a little shift in the way we're thinking. And that, in this case, is done by two commas. Sometimes we do it with two dashes, but more often with two commas, and that's why we have the comma after weightlessness. It has nothing to do with the quotes. Nothing. It's entirely because of the appositive and the interruption that we need to show our readers. It's tricky. It's tricky because there's already a bunch of other commas in the sentence, but the more you can kind of narrow your focus and, and, and notice the different rules playing out, the less that you have to think about the rest of the sentence and the more you can focus on the rule in front of you. That's, that's why memorizing the grammar rules that they test is so important. It gives you kind of like a menu in your brain that you can choose from in different situations and get your brain on the right track.